Greetings. This is the chief of all days. It is um, the day of our faith and the day in which we see our Lord Jesus uh, risen from the dead. And one traditional thing that we do when we're together is to have that antiphon where the pastor says, Christ is risen, and you respond with, He is risen risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. And we'll be doing that throughout the service today. Uh, We are so glad that you're with us in worship. And we would encourage you to uh, download the liturgy for today. And that's available at our website, www.OurSaviorBurlington.com. You'll be able to follow along with the worship service. And so uh, we begin with that Easter greeting Christ is risen, he He is risen risen indeed, indeed. alleluia. Our first hymn is hymn 457, Jesus Christ is risen today. Yeah. 
We're on page two of that worship folder. We begin with the invocation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Christ is risen. He, he is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. The stone has been rolled away. Alleluia. The, the crucified, crucified is risen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Christ has conquered death by the cross. He, he has, has come out of the tomb. Christ has risen and will not die again. Death, death has, has been, been swallowed up in victory. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone. The new has come. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. Christ is risen he is, he is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Amen. This is the feast.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, by the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, you destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light. Grant that we who have been raised with him may abide in his presence and rejoice in the hope of eternal glory through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. The first reading comes to us from the book of Acts, chapter 10, beginning with the 34th verse. Then Peter began to speak, I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts men from every nation who fear Him and do what is right. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel, telling the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what has happened throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how He went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil, because God was with Him. We are witnesses of everything He did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed Him by hanging Him on a tree, but God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. He was not seen by all the people, but by witnesses whom God had already chosen, by us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. The Old Testament reading is from Zechariah chapter 14, verses 8 through 11. On that day, living water will flow out from Jerusalem, half to the eastern sea and half to the western sea, in summer and in winter. The Lord will be king over the whole earth. On that day there will be one Lord, and His name the only name. The whole land from Geba to Rimon, south of Jerusalem, will become like the Arabah, but Jerusalem will be raised up and will remain in its place. From the Benjamin Gate to the site of the first gate to the corner gate, and from the tower of Hanel to the royal wine press, it will be inhabited. Never again will it be destroyed. Jerusalem will be secure. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Our epistle lesson is from the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, beginning with the 14th verse. For Christ's love compels us because we are convinced that one died for all, and therefore all died. And He died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for Him who died for them and was raised again. So from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. We stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. After the Sabbath at dawn, on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and was going to the tomb, and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, do not be afraid. For I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid, yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. You may be seated. Boys and girls, I'd invite you to come forward, but that's just not going to work. So I'm glad that you're watching and you're at home. And I want to talk to you about the great joy of Easter and uh, some of the things that we see around here this this morning or this evening, depending on when you're viewing this. But I want to tell you that you know what happened to Jesus, that on Friday, we call it Good Friday, Jesus was placed on a cross, and and there Jesus died. He died for our sins, for the sins of the whole world, And, and after his death, the people who loved him took him down off of the tree, off of the cross, 
and they wrapped him up in burial cloths and they put him into something that looked like a cave. And that cave had a stone that was rolled on the, on the entrance so that nobody could get in and no one would get out. Well, three days later on Easter Sunday, the very first Easter, there were some ladies who wanted to take care of Jesus' body. And so they went to the tomb all prepared to see Jesus still wrapped up in those clothes. But you know what? Did you hear what happened in, in that gospel reading? It was so wonderful, but it was, a, it was frightening because there was an earthquake and the stone was rolled over and there was an angel and the angel was sitting on the stone and the angel had told the ladies that Jesus was not there. He was alive. He was risen. And they were to go and to tell the disciples. Now I'm thinking about what we see here during Easter, and you'll notice that there's a lot of these things. Um, they're called Easter lilies. And, and I'm kind of wondering, why do we have Easter lilies on Easter Sunday? Why this flower? But you know, I, when I look at this, I see it looks like a trumpet. And a trumpet announces. And that angel, we think about announcing that Jesus is no longer dead. He's alive and living. And so... That's what the ladies were supposed to do. They were supposed to tell that to the disciples. And, and the disciples were to tell that to everyone. And that's for you and me too, that we are to tell people that we don't have to be afraid of death anymore, that Jesus makes all things new. So you're at home, and what I'd like you to do, maybe sometime today or tomorrow, is to take a piece of paper. You can take any type of paper that you want and maybe get a crayon or a marker and one thing that you can write on that paper is Alleluia A-L-L-E-L-U-I-A -L -L -E you see that? Alleluia and Alleluia means praise God or praise the Lord and what I'd like to do with that hallelujah, is to make a trumpet just like the Easter lily. So you can write hallelujah on your paper. And let's make a trumpet. There we go. Did you ever do this? Hallelujah! <laughs> Christ is risen! <laughs> and, and it reminds us that we're to, we're to do that, boys and girls, to tell the good news. It's the best news of all, that Jesus is alive he makes all things new. He gives us his forgiveness. Have a good day, boys and girls, and go in Christ. We invite you to turn now to the sermon hymn number 461, I Know That My Redeemer Lives.
God's grace, His tender mercy, and His peace be multiplied unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text comes for us from the book of Zechariah, chapter 14, verses 8 through 11, as well as the other readings today. <clears throat> Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, younger people may not understand this, but it's hard to see things grow old. Back in the early 80s when I was a pastor in Illinois, our church had a softball team, and somehow the guys and the ladies let me play on that team. I was all in with vigor and enthusiasm and strength, and in one game I foolishly slid into base and tore the meniscus in my right knee. Now that's that piece of cartilage that provides the cushion between the femur and the tibia. And after that injury, when I was in my office working, sitting, my knee would lock up and I was unable to straighten it out. Well, back then in the 80s, a brand new surgery had came online and it was arthroscopic surgery. And so, okay, I had that done. The surgeon took out 50% of the cartilage. Well, now during this time, I can't swim every day, and that's because of the stay-at-home stay rule, and I've turned to an hour of walking each evening with my wife, Pat, for my exercise. Now, walking is nothing like swimming, and after our walks, I can feel that 40-year-old knee injury. I remember talking to the surgeon, you know, if you take out that 50% of that cartilage, what's going to happen when I get old? And he didn't really say much. By the way, if you hear on the news that an LCMS pastor has broken into the Burlington swimming pool and he's doing laps, that's not me. I'm just kidding. I wish I could get my knee back again. And sometimes I've been saying to you, I wish that I had a reset button so that I could have 25 years back. And that's not so much because I've got regrets, because there are many, it's just because there are many wonderful opportunities that I have just let slide by over time, and I, I wish I could enjoy them all. I love being your pastor for over 32 years, and conducting weddings and baptisms and funerals. I, I like to do funerals because there's such a joyful celebration in this congregation. Confirmations and Bible classes and preaching and, and the Lord's Supper, all of that. And I'd just love to do it for another 25 or 30 years, but that would put me way past 100 years old, and I know that that's just not going to happen. I wish my mom and dad and my grandpas and my grandmas were still here to see my children and meet their spouses and enjoy our beautiful grandchildren. Ah, they would be so happy. I wish we could just reset the world by four months so that we could worship in person and receive the holy precious body and blood of our Lord Jesus together on this Easter. Oh, how I wish I could make everything new again. But I can't, and neither can you. But Jesus can, and He does. On this day, we celebrate that the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this, and today, it is marvelous in our eyes. On this day of days, we celebrate that though Jesus was betrayed, arrested, tormented, tortured, crucified, dead, and buried, and although it was all very ugly and vile and barbaric, it was not the end. Far from it. Christ is alive. Death has no more dominion over Him. Heaven's best 
took on hell's worst and heaven has triumphed. The master of death could not destroy the Lord of life. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. For the last two months in our Lenten series, we've been looking at the Old Testament prophet Zechariah, and today we come to the last chapter of his book, Zechariah chapter 14. And with the help and the wonderful insights of Dr. Reed Lessing on this chapter, we're going to use his insights in this sermon, which we call All Things New. Zechariah begins with his own Good Friday in this book, in this chapter. Spoil, capture, plunder, exile, battle, and combat. Zechariah 14 verse 2 says, I will gather all the nations to Jerusalem for battle, and the city will be captured, and the houses plundered, and the women ravished. And half of the city will go into exile. The Jerusalem that Zechariah sees is overrun by armies. People are captured, imprisoned, and exiled. Houses are plundered, torn down, shuttered, and emptied. The prophet looks around, and oh, how he longs for the reset button. Oh, if it could all be made new again. 500 years ago, sailors feared the horizon. If they sailed too far, they believed that they would fall off the edge of the world, and that would be that. At the Strait of Gibraltar, Spaniards built a huge marker with three Latin words engraved on it, ne plus ultra, Nothing more beyond. But then came Christopher Columbus in 1492, the discovery of the New World. It changed everything. Spain acknowledged this in the coins that they began to mint. It bear the slogan, plus ultra, more beyond. Zechariah chapter 14 begins looking like nay plus ultra ultra, nothing more beyond, and we call that Good Friday. But then in verse 3 of chapter 14, Zechariah says, the Lord will go forth and fight against those nations, just as in the day of his fighting, in the day of battle. The Lord goes forth here to fight, and oh, does he fight. He defeats every enemy And we think on Easter, he has defeated the last enemy, death. Life confronts death, and guess what? Life wins. Death dies, and life wins. Plus, ultra, more beyond. Zechariah 14, verse 3, And the Lord will go forth and fight. God fights for his people. And that's what Good Friday and that's what Easter is all about. God fights for our health and for our family. He fights for our salvation and for our restoration and our recreation. The odds, are they against you? Is the coach against you? Is the boss against you? Is your health against you? Are your emotions against you? Difficult for sure. Nevertheless, God fights for you. You with the tortured childhood. You with the aging body. You with the absentee dad. You with the lost job. You with the bad back. You with the bad credit score. With the bad grade. The bad break. You with the sordid addiction. You with the diagnosis of depression plus ultra. There's more beyond. God fights to make all things new. Oh yeah, he does. Zechariah 14 verses 6 through 11 presents the sequence 
that progressively depicts how creation, Jerusalem, and our lives will be transformed. Let's get more specific here. There will be a day, Zechariah says, in verses 6 and 7 of chapter 14, where there will be no frost or cold in the evening, and there will be light. The darkness of warfare will give way to a new day of never-ending light. Verse 8 of chapter 14, oh, I love this. Living waters shall flow out from Jerusalem, half of them to the eastern sea and half of them to the western sea. It shall continue in summer as in winter. Drought and scarcity will give way to water and life. In verse 10 of chapter 14, the prophet says that Jerusalem will rise while God flattens the surrounding hill country, thus making this city secure forever. In chapter 10, Zechariah goes on to, des- in verse 10, Zechariah goes on to describe the gate of Benjamin, the corner gate, the tower of Hanel, and the king's winepress. All of the old places and the markers in the buildings are back. Just imagine. In verse 11, Zechariah says, Jerusalem will be inhabited, for there will never again be a decree of utter destruction. Jerusalem will dwell in security. Zechariah is picturing all things new. In fact, that term all occurs 12 times in the book of Zechariah. Twelve is significant. Twelve tribes in Israel, twelve apostles. Twelve is the complete number in the Bible. Twelve announces all things. Everything is going to be new. Zechariah's emphasis on what God will do makes it clear that the future is more important than the past. Our past? It's not pretty. It's full of frustrations and failures disappointments. It's full of pain. Our past has been marked by selfishness and pride, pretending. But our future is definitely more important than our past. And what about our future? Ha! Ah, perfect relationships, perfect bodies, perfect bliss, perfect joy, perfect delight, Jesus will make all things, everything new, even you. Verse 9 serves as the centerpiece of this chapter. It interrupts its flow of things to accent the importance. God fights for us and renews what looks old and dead and hopeless. It's only fitting that Zechariah acclaims that God is king. Yahweh, the Lord, will be king over all the earth. There will be, and I love this verse, one God ruling from one city over one nation for the sake of this one world, a world that he will make completely new. When we take our trips to Guatemala, it's always nice after our week of work to get on the plane in Guatemala City and then fly back to O'Hare. When I'm in Chicago and I land in O'Hare, I always think, hey, I'm going to be home soon. I go down to the baggage claim and we I call the, uh, the van to pick us up, our group, and then we take our way, or we make our way to the church, and I find my key, hopefully I can find my key to get into the church, we do, and then I find the car keys, which I leave somewhere in the church, and I get in my car, and I drive to 2424 Fairfield Lane, and I think all the way, I'm going to be home soon. Well, you're going to be home soon, too. 
we all will, by grace, through faith, because of Christ's resurrection, we may not have noticed it, but we're closer to home more than we think, more than we've noticed it. Each moment a step is taken, each moment a breath is taken, a page is turned. Each day a mile is marked and a mountain is climbed. We're closer to home than we've ever been. Before we know it, our time will come. We'll walk down the ramp and we'll enter into the city, Zechariah's new Jerusalem, and we'll see people waiting for us. We'll hear our names spoken by those who know us. And we'll see the face of the one who would rather die than live without us, Jesus. Jesus, whose victory makes all things new. And this promise, oh, it cheers us in our sorrows. It strengthens us in our trials. It revives us when we lose hope. It gladdens us when we feel despondent. It kindles in us an undying devotion to the truth of our Savior's shed blood, His empty tomb, and His free gift of everlasting life. Zechariah has seen it in the Old Testament. It's this new golden Jerusalem. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please stand. We confess our faith. We use the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of His Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. Online uh, giving will be available soon at Our Savior. Your faithful offerings will enable the ministry of our congregation to continue sharing the gospel to our family and to the world. Please make your um, or mail your weekly offerings to uh, Sherry Fickow, our financial secretary at Our Savior Lutheran Church, 417 South Kane Street, Burlington, Wisconsin, 53105. We sing now, At the Lamb's High Feast, hymn 633.
Rejoicing in the resurrection of our Lord and sharing in His peace, let us pray to the Lord on behalf of ourselves and all people as they have need. O risen Savior, set free our tongues to confess Your resurrection before a world still captive to sin and death. Give us courage to go to every place and to speak in every language the salvation won for us upon the cross and the hope granted to us of life that death cannot overcome. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O risen Savior, make us to burn with the fire of your love that we may love you above all things and love our neighbors as ourselves. Deliver us from fear and relieve the anxiety of our hearts, that we may live out fully the hope planted within us and the new lives that we've received in the waters of our baptism. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. O risen Savior, anoint the words of those who preach to us with your gospel and open our ears to hear with faith all that has done, been done to save us. Raise up many who will serve you in the various callings of your church and who will serve us in your name with your word and gifts. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. O risen Savior, hear us on behalf of Donald, our president, Tony, our governor, the Congress of the United States, and all state and local elected officials. Guide them according to your word that their labors for our nation's health and welfare may not be in vain, nor forgetful of the vulnerable, aging, and unemployed. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. O risen Savior, across our nation so many are imprisoned. Bless all prison workers that, may, that they would be humane and serve with integrity. Bless those incarcerated with hope for the future, an amendment of life. Help them to serve their sentences with patience and trust in you and bless their families who love them. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Heavenly Father, we are blessed by the body and the blood given to us by your Son. Have mercy on all who are kept from your table in these extraordinary circumstances and do not shut them out of your supper forever. Stir up in us a desire to worship and commune with our fellow Christians on your true body and blood and bring us soon to the table of the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. O risen Savior, hear us on behalf of those who cry to you in every need, especially the sick, the suffering, the disabled, the wounded in spirit, those who suffer mental illnesses and those in their last days on earth. Give them grace according to their need and sustain them in their afflictions to the day when their sufferings will be in exchanged for glory in the life to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O risen Savior, accept the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving from our lips and the tithes and the offerings we bring this day. Increase in the hearts of your people delight in your mercy gratitude for all your benefits, and an eagerness to support the mission of your church in word and deed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All praise to you, dear Father in heaven, for you've opened up to us the way of eternal life in the resurrection of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. We give you thanks for all those who have gone before us in faith and now rest from their labors. Keep us in that same faith and embolden us by your resurrection to be fearless in the face of disease, chaos, loneliness, and every sorrow of this world. Give us with Job the solemn expectation to cheer us. Our Redeemer lives and we too shall be 
resurrected and glorified to live with Him in His eternal kingdom. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our resurrected Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please join with me in singing hymn 465, Now All the Vault of Heaven Resounds. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Please join with me in singing hymn 464, The Strife is O'er, 
the battle done. What a joy to be with you. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Um, I don't know of any uh, particular announcements we need to make at this time. Uh, I would love to have you join us in fellowship uh, at 9 o'clock on Sunday morning from 9 to 9.30. Just go to our website, www.OurSaviorBurlington.com and click in and we'll have a fellowship half hour and then a great Bible study uh, from 9.30 to 10.30. Uh, bring your coffee and donuts for all of this and uh, we'll eat them at home, I guess. But it's, it's great to have this fellowship um, and to be able to do this online. Uh, also, uh, a good news class. Uh, we're going to try good news class uh, through Zoom. And I would like to begin that, uh, not this Sunday, but uh, the Sunday after at 6.30 on Sunday evenings. And so if you've never had a chance to be a part of Our Savior's Good News class, I'd encourage you to, uh, to talk to me or to, to email me, and we'll get you all set up with uh, good news on 6.30 on Sunday evenings. I'm thinking we have a church council meeting virtually uh, that will be on Monday and then a uh, preschool board meeting which will be on Tuesday. Uh, please um, give us your feedback as far as how we're doing with the sound and all of that and, and uh, we pray God's richest blessings, the celebration and the hope and the life that Jesus gives on this, the most greatest of days the resurrection of our Lord Jesus' resurrection. God's peace and his blessing be with you.